my name is Stephen Smith. I'm a QuickBooks and Quicken expert, and I am the owner of Controllership Solutions, specializing in training and troubleshooting as well as outsource controllership services to businesses and individuals, and the owner of Sundial Virtual Family Office, a full-service boutique family office supporting the needs of busy families. In this video, we are going to go over the conversion from Quicken to QuickBooks. We recently were hired to do a conversion from Quicken to QuickBooks, and there were a few gotchas along the way. So this video is going to go over best practices, tips, and tricks to make it as seamless as possible of an experience for you. So if you are going to convert, uh, and if you are one of those individuals or businesses that it does make sense for, before converting, here's a few things that you should do. First, reconcile your balance sheet. Make it easier on yourself uh, to compare and look for any mistakes that did not go well in the conversion. So make sure that's good. Make sure you try to merge and consolidate as many of your categories in Quicken as possible um, so that you uh, have a nice clean file once it ports over and verify your data. Now, in reality, these are three best practices that you should always employ with your Quicken file. You should always have a reconciled balance sheet. You should always try to keep a nice clean category list and you should always keep your data verified and backed up, which is the next tip. Make sure you're backing up and make sure you are um, using the backed up version, not your original copy. The final tip is the biggest gotcha. One of the big gotchas is delete all of the memorized rules. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But the memorized rules are all the rules that Quicken records as you download from your banks and your credit cards. You want to delete all of those uh, because it does not translate well once in QuickBooks. There's three ways to convert. This video is really only going to go over the one of them. Um, the three things to do is, you know, you don't have to actually convert. You can just start a new QuickBooks file. Just leave your Quicken file as a kind of a legacy copy and then just start a new in a new QuickBooks file. Another option is to what we're going to discuss, converting your Quicken file from Q, a QDF file, which is the actual Quicken file directly into QuickBooks, which will bring over everything. Or there's a third way I call the a la carte option, which is you can export different reports from Quicken whether it be a spending PL report or a account report or a register uh, into Excel where you could further manipulate that data, perhaps change some of the payees, the vendors, the categorization, and then using third-party software, bring in that Excel CSV file into QuickBooks since QuickBooks does not really accept a Excel file. The first step is to go from Quicken to QuickBooks Desktop. Now, if you're thinking QuickBooks Online, you still want to go through QuickBooks Desktop first. There are converters out there. This video is not going to cover them. I recommend going through QuickBooks Desktop first. Uh, and if you don't have it, like I said, you can find a converter. But again, that's not a recommended practice. When you're opening up QuickBooks, you're not going to go File Open like you typically might. Rather, you're going to go File, Utilities, Convert, and then you'll see From Quicken. File, Utilities, Convert, From Quicken. You're then going to navigate to the QDF file, which is the actual live Quicken file that stores all of the data. You're going to make sure the Quicken program is closed, and then you're going to open it. So what's going to happen is it's then going to start working, and we're going to skip ahead to the prompts. You're going to see something that says converting Quicken transactions, just like that. It might take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes, depending on the size of your, your Quicken file. Along the way, you might see some other prompts. These are usually good signs. For instance, if you're using the home and business flavor, it will recognize that you have an accounts receivable. It will recognize customers, and it will know to actually create the accounts receivable account and it will know to create customers, and it will even create invoices for all of your transactions. 
So again, that's a very nice feature of the, the conversion. It will do the same thing with checks and bank accounts. It will recognize a check coming out of a bank account and it will put it into one of the bank style chart of accounts. The conversion process also does a very good job with credit cards, assets. It puts everything in other assets. It does not distinguish between other assets and fixed assets. Liabilities it does not distinguish between current liabilities and long-term liabilities, but it does put things in current liabilities. It will then verify the data and hopefully it passes. And then the next prompt that you may get, and you will most likely get it, is this one. This is the second big gotcha. So this is my the second big takeaway from this entire video, which is the name versus vendor list. During the conversion process, Quicken refers to all of the payees as other names. So the conversion will say, you know, in QuickBooks, every payee must be on a list. Well, QuickBooks has two types of lists, other name lists and vendor lists. And there's also customer and employee, but they're not really relevant. But there's other names or there's vendor. I recommend that you utilize the vendor lists and vendors because there's more functionality in QuickBooks under vendors than there is under other names. However, the conversion process defaults to putting all the payees as other names. So after you click OK on the first prompt, it will then ask you, would you like to view the other list names? Display that list. You have basically this is your only shot to do it in bulk because when you hit display list, this will pop up. Uh, the first time we did the conversion, we said, ah, we'll do it later. Don't display the list. It went into QuickBooks. And then realized, oh, it would be difficult to actually convert every other name to a vendor because it would be a one for one process. So while you're in the screen, go down, click, 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 click. Now, the other annoyance in the conversion is that the payees, you don't really pay much attention to payees in Quicken. It doesn't matter. But in vendors, in QuickBooks, vendor lists mean typically a little bit more because there's typically fewer than in, in with businesses than there is in personal accounts. So you might have, if uh, you're a typical Quicken file, this same payee repeated multiple times and with different names. And that's just because Quicken is getting different information, usually from the banks and the credit card companies that also store it as different vent vendors are different payees. So that's one of the annoyances, uh, depending on how you know detailed you want to be, you can go back and merge these, um, or you could just leave them and, and, and go forward. So uh, once that those prompts are gone and once you're when, once you're done, the next step would be to open up and take a look at your data. Hopefully it went went through. Uh, you're going to compare your balance sheet. Uh, make sure that all of the values are equal. Banks, no problem. Assets, no problem. Liabilities, no problem. But remember, when it comes to the fair market value of your brokerage accounts, that will be different. That concept, fair market value, or unrealized gains and losses, does not exist in QuickBooks as it does in Quicken. So you won't really be comparing the value of your brokerage accounts Rather that you'll get a different value, you'll get a different amount, and you'll get it at, you'll see in QuickBooks that it's the basis. But even then, it's not the basis of the securities. It's really the basis of the account because the, it's going to capture all the dividends and the interest and the short-term capital gains and losses that have occurred and all that activity that has occurred over the life of that account. The other big difference between the balance sheets and Quicken and QuickBooks will be the concept of equity. Quicken does not have an equity account. It has a net worth. QuickBooks being a business system it has assets minus liabilities equals equity. So lots of the beginning balances are going to be in the opening balance equity section of your QuickBooks balance sheet. Uh, next, I would encourage you to compare your profit and loss. Look at it by year, month, make sure all of the activity came in, all of the activity came in correctly. 
Uh, if it's by if you have classes, look at it by classes. In Quicken, they were referred to as tags. Now that you're in QuickBooks, they're referred to as classes. And check how they are named. Sometimes you have to go in and change the names a little bit uh, in QuickBooks because that conversion doesn't work exactly. Uh, you're also going to want to refer to them as accounts now, not categories as they once were in, in Quicken. Then if there's any more memorized transactions that are left, you are going to want to get rid of those memorized transactions. You can do that by going up to lists, memorized transactions, and let's just see. And then you'll see a whole bunch of them here. And if there are any left, you can just delete them one at a time, hitting Control D or right click delete. But again, I recommend doing getting rid of all of these in Quicken before you even do this process so you don't have to hit it you know, hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, then you can do the same thing with your vendor list. If you really want to merge your vendor list, you can do that. Uh, if you're using the account version in QuickBooks, that might help, um, or you can do it manually. Now, if QuickBooks Desktop is not your final desktop destination and you are moving on to QuickBooks Online, you may then upload to QuickBooks Online. I'm not going to go into that this video. There are loads of YouTube videos on converting from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. Uh, the process is relatively straightforward. Intuit is more than happy to help convert people from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. Again, the, the big catches are make sure you get those memorized transactions out before getting up to QuickBooks Online. Make sure you do any merged vendors before you get to QuickBooks Online. And I would even recommend looking at your chart of account list and trying to streamline that down before you get up into QuickBooks Online because the list from Quicken to QuickBooks uh, is going to be big. And QuickBooks Online now puts a limit at 250 on your chart of accounts. So pass the prompts. Uh, hopefully you received that successfully converted your Quicken data uh, notice. And again, thanks for watching. My name is Stephen Smith. I'm the owner of Sundial Virtual Family Office as well as Controllership Solutions. You can find me at sundialvfo.com uh, and you can also find me at quickencoach.com. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see any other videos. Thanks.